dijo a su compañera, vamos a navegar, a ver quién llega primero, al otro lado del mar. Le dijo a su compañera, vamos a navegar, a ver quién llega primero, al otro lado del mar. Ariles y bien, Ariles, Ariles de primavera, cuando vienes por acá, yo me pongo muy feliz. with us to learn from the various instruments that um, as you can see today that we have um, and yeah we are usually present in marches rallies uh, very pro-immigrant um, a lot of activism not just in DC but we go to Virginia Maryland as well 
Um, and just to introduce ourselves and our instruments, my name's Noeli. Um, I've been with Cosita for the last, I think, three years now. Um, and this is a quijada, which is actually the donkey skull. And it's the percussion of what we're playing today. Um, yeah, um, this is a jarana. That mine, they come in sizes. Mine is a segunda. So the bigger, the tercera is the biggest jarana uh, there is. And the, or the you go from to the smallest one, which is the mosquito. And I'm, I've been with Cosita for, for uh, like three years as well. And uh, yeah, and I'm from, from Mexicali in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I'm Ceci. Um, I'm playing the jarana primera, a little bit smaller than Saida's. Um, and I've been in Cosita for about four years. And I'll just add that, you know, with the song we just sang, you might, if you, you might have heard that some of the verses were changed to talk about being in quarantine and surviving the pandemic. And um, this next song we're also going to play is that we're going to close out with. Um, it's called Señor Presidente. And um, its verses are also changed by different uh, people in the movement that play it at protests for workers' rights, for tenants' rights, um, for immigration rights. And so we've done the same thing and we're going to showcase that now. Is there anything else I'm missing? No. Okay, cool. So this is our last song um, and it's called Señor Presidente. Oh wait, I do have one more thing for everybody listening. Um, you can reach out to us. We have social media. So we're on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Son Cosita Seria. <laughs>
Gracias. Gracias. Adiós. Gracias. Thank you so much. Son cosita seria. And welcome, bienvenidos um, to everyone. Um, as Farah mentioned in the chat, we have a bilingual conversation today. So I just want to say welcome to everyone. And also that if you haven't already, you can choose the language interpretation option in your settings, depending on where, what you're using, iPad or phone or computer. Um, it should say language interpretation or it should be a little globe icon. So you can pick that in order to select the language, English or Spanish. Um, so yeah, vamos a usar, usar interpretación simultáneamente hoy. Y para que podemos tener una conversación en inglés uh, y en español. Simultaneous interpretation today, what you can do is to on your control, choose language interpretation. It's in English. And if you have a globe, you can make a click on the globe and choose your language if you want Spanish. I'm going to stop our time together and let our amazing interpreters do their job. Uh, now that everyone has hopefully the language interpretation um, turned on if they need it. And um, with that, I want to welcome you all again. I just want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Sapna Pandya. I am on the Board of Instigators at the DC Diversity Fund. And I'm really, really very excited, very motivated, very um, uh, honored to be able to kind of be the moderator for this uh, conversation today, where we're trying to highlight a campaign which has really been truly one of the most inspiring campaigns I've ever seen in the district. Um, the city of my birth, been organizing here for 10 plus years and really to see uh, just from the sidelines, uh, the work that went on in this campaign has been truly amazing. Um, a diverse uh, group of people really highlighting the diverse in the diversity fund that we try to talk about in DC from language to race, to the diversity in people who have organized for a very long time, to those who are just coming onto the street and organizing for the first time. I mean, that in itself is a huge part of this campaign that's exciting. Um, we've just included some of the organizations that were included in this campaign today. So there were actually many groups that were part of this and we're trying to highlight our grantees, those that were able to support through the funding that we're able to provide through the DC Diversity Fund. And hopefully with this funding, it uh, really contributed to the success of this campaign. Um, I, and then the last thing I want to say is just that this is just so unprecedented also organizing during a pandemic and organizing during a pandemic in the middle of a fascist federal government. So it's just layers upon layers. And these are some of the points which I hope will come out in the conversation today as we talk about the excluded workers campaign or the campaign to ensure that those that were left out of the stimulus and unemployment benefits given um, in light of COVID-19 are still provided some type of support and uh, monetary assistance in particular. Um, so with that, I want to, we only have an hour, so we're going to quickly try to move through, even though there's so many gems in this conversation, I'm going to quickly move through and go to a little bit of an overview. I'm going to turn over to Megan. Um, to give a, a, an overview of this campaign. Um, they have some slides to share uh, to sort of give a little bit of a visual so we can learn more about the campaign details. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Sapna. Can you hear me? Yeah. So super good to see you. Thank you. Um, so um, it, this was just such an exciting campaign because it exemplified um, intersectional organizing and emergent strategy. So I don't like, so like rather than like throw organizer language at you, it just, it just brought many people together who are basically siloed in different identities and different sorts of strategies. So if we could move on. Um, <clears throat> so like there were creative, creative and emergent strategies and tactics that built on a bedrock of like long time organizing. So I want to call out our friends on the phone. Um, Tamika Spellman from HIPS has just been like in the fight for a really long time doing the day to day work of organizing, which is why the diversity fund is so important because it, you know, we get to, we get to use that support direct for direct organizing that makes these moments possible. I also wanted to lift up um, Miguel um, Castro, who works both at MLove and at Rock United Restaurants Opportunity Center. Um, I see Arturo here on the phone and Trabajadores Unidos has been in the fight to build worker justice for a long time. And I'm Am I missing anybody else, Safna? 
I got everybody. Okay, cool. Can can we go? Can we go on? All right. So I, I I'm I'm going to tell the story first, just through the lens of um, the um, street vendors, um, and and hoping that Tamika and um, and all the rest of our comrades can tell their stories through the lens of their own organization. So like all our comrades, we started with storytelling, but you can't stop there. So the power lies there with like listening to folks and people actually started coming in to our own, our, our old and love office, Sapna, telling us that the police were actually cuffing and hurting street vendors on the street. So I was enraged <laughs> and I went out and basically sat with street funders for hundreds of hours, just like everybody else here does on the call. We, we sit with our members, we be with them, we accompany them, we listen to their stories. Can we move on to the next slide? And then, so we started out with a certain like, um, like piece of that constituency, just like everybody else starts out with a certain piece of their constituency and it was food vendors who were getting beat up the most. But we lean into pandemic organizing, just like Restaurant Opportunity Center did, just like HIPS did, and just like Trabajadores Unidos did into a pandemic under a fascist presidential regime, right? Because we stick with our people. So we expanded our base, just like all of our other, um, uh, the organizations did here on the call. Can we move on to the next? Awesome. So we realized, right, that we couldn't just stick with Latinx street vendors. There were mask vendors, and there's Rasul El Amin in a mask, and he's here. He's going to talk to you soon. And there's uh, also um, Chris Demola, who's a Nigerian. Um, uh, uh, he's a Nigerian painter on the street as well. Um, next, next slide, please. And then there were also like people selling, like being so creative and selling like, like cleaning supplies out of their cars and selling oils and we started like building a more and more diverse street vendor union which at this point has like whew, almost 100 vendors and like and is like is super diverse right um next slide please so <laughs> we realized and this is the whole gang here right this is our crew we realized that we were gonna have to like break through the bubble, but keep people safe at the same time and socially distance. And we we changed the rules of the game. So here is Mary Che, one of our targets on city council saying, this is just not how you do things. This is not how drop-in visits work. And we were like, no, this is where you're making the legislation. We're coming to your house. But you see there members like diversity fund grantees and then other orgs who are supportive as well, people on the call, as well as um, the National Domestic Workers Alliance and other folks confronting Mary J on her front steps. And we're like, nope, these are our rules of the game. These are the rules of the game right now. So we were part of multiple ecosystems. We looked at these like, um, connections between them and then we like figured out together right like these organizing ecosystems and we figured out together with hips and all our friends like we redefined the rules of the game in a really strategic moment next slide please and I'm almost going to wrap here and we did it with Phil <laughs> and you know we we had to be in super close connection as well with our advocate friends so that they could tell us what was going in on in the inside so we could run a really smart outside strategy. We were at Phil's house probably five times. And here's one of our members. It's either Rusby or like a, a rock member actually confronting Phil and pinning him for lying to their faces while doing something different in the city council meetings. So we were running like both an in, in, like active inside and active uh, outside strategies that were super connected that centered BIPOC people. Next slide, please. I think that might be it. That might be the last slide. Um, so those were just one of like lots and lots of visits and then I will wrap there um, so that like other folks can tell their own personal stories. I believe Reyna wasn't able to join us from the street, um, but I'm going to try to get her as Rasul. So. That's great. Thank you so much, Megan. I uh, really appreciate that. I love the visuals. Um, everyone is able to see, I see the comments that it's really inspiring and exciting to see showing up at council members' office homes, not offices. Um, that's one thing, you know, when, when we show up at their offices, but to show up at their houses, uh, to take that kind of direct action, to use that tactic, um, super inspiring, amazing, and uh, like you said, changing the rules of the game as is necessary. So appreciate that. Um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about some of the goals uh, of the campaign. And obviously the goal was to, 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 get, to get funding, to get money, but I wanted to ask uh, Norma 
um, and Laura, if uh, Norma and Laura both are there from uh, Rock DC, to talk a little bit, if you would share with us, what were the goals for you personally? Why did you get involved in this campaign? What did you want to gain from being a part of this campaign? Hola. Hola, ¿me pueden escuchar? Bueno, nosotros empezamos a, a unirnos porque vimos que... When we saw that this situation started and we didn't have the, the necessary help, that's when we started to ask that we needed to be, we knew that it was a situation that was very a strange situation that we were risking uh, our lives and our own, our, our family's lives. We needed to do something. We couldn't just stay uh, waiting for somebody to solve this. So we started to, we, st we found Rock and we got, got together with them and we, uh, through the social platforms um, and with um, uh, Olga Salazar, we started to invite people. It wasn't easy. Everybody was in quarantine. Everybody was locked in lockdown. So we started to, to, to start to do something. And when we got together with other organizations, we saw that we needed to, we needed to reach the council members and to tell them how we felt and to not have money, to feel that we, the, the debt were really getting to us. We needed to pay rent. We still do. We haven't, it's not over yet, but we're, we're working uh, towards that with the support of Rock. We have helped each other. We have supported each other. We are trying to do what we can. And I can say that in this moment, we are not, we don't feel alone. We feel supported. And uh, even because even uh, on top of that risk, it has been a worthwhile risk. We're not fighting just for ourselves. We're not. We're not saying who, who we. We're not. We're not even looking at who we are. We're just getting together. We're the voice of many that that don't that cannot participate. Thank you, gracias, Norma. That was really. I really appreciate the points um, that you shared, and especially to be the voice of the people of the, all the people is a really important point. Um, would you like to share something else about the sí. reason why it was successful? Sí. Ya se habló also, de... uh, yes, we talked about what we've done in the protests, but something really important that was done was the, to be all night outside of, of a council member's um, home. It was, uh, it was raining, it was very strong. It didn't matter how we were but we were we we had to be there it was needed to be there it was necessary to be there so it could be easy to say but it was very difficult it was really hard it was very very difficult because we just we all know the situation uh, that we're going through so it's very easy to say oh we'll we've walked this this path it's really easy to say that but it's not it has not been easy it really hasn't been easy because of the risk that we have gone yeah, through. Thank you for sharing that. It was extremely risky and not just the rain, but the situation, the political situation in general, the um, situation when it comes to immigration, the situation when it comes to, I believe it was majority women in the campaign as well. So taking that as uh, the, the, the risk and the um, sort of things that you're giving up, the sacrifices um, as, as mothers, uh, as parents being out there on the front lines. So if you wanna, um, you know, say something more uh, about that as well. Sí, la mayoría de nosotros so somos... yes, the majority of us are moms, uh, mothers. The majority of the group members are mothers. As I said before, it was really hard to get together because of the situation. But once that eh, we, we were able to do it, we've been participating each week, at least eat, at least a weekly, or you know, if we have something uh, important to share. So we have left behind a lot, a lot of things behind. Uh, it's 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 been very helpful. We came out to talk. Y bueno, nos hemos ayudado con muchas cosas, con eh, carteles. Rock nos ha apoyado en la manera de que ellos, a través de otras organizaciones, nos han buscado eh, comida. Mm. 
eh, útiles escolares, tabletas y todo lo que necesitamos porque esto tiene que seguir y los niños eh, están, también necesitan ayuda. Entonces, este, nos sentimos muy, muy apoyados por Rock, pero nosotros también estamos trabajando mucho. Definitely, and, and I can see that a lot, lots of sacrifices and, and lots of um, effort. Sí, eh, todo el esfuerzo que ustedes han puesto en esto, en esta campaña, todo el trabajo que es eh, continuo, y la energía y las estrategias que ustedes han utilizado. Quería también preguntarle a Reina, una de las otras. Giving up your, your daily business, perhaps, to be part of the meetings, to be part of the strategizing and to participate in actions. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like, Reina, um, in terms of, uh, you know, not being able to be there on the street earning money because you want to be part of a campaign where you're asking the government to provide what you deserve, what, uh, what is your right. Um, could you speak a little to that, Reina? I'm not sure if Reina can hear me. Hello? Oh. Hello? Yes, uh, Reina, if you can hear me, I want to know if you can talk a little bit about the, the threat and, and the sound. Sí, un segundo, estoy caminando acá donde no hay mucho ruido, por favor. Okay. Sí, gracias. Sí, Maybe. como, sí, uh -huh. ya. Yeah. Eh, uh, sí, mire, uh, pues como decía también la, la compañera de Rox, eh, nosotros como... Eh, en, en este caso, como Vendedores Unidos, también hemos trabajado y luchado juntamente con todos ellos para, para conseguir lo que se ha conseguido hasta el momento. Y no ha sido fácil. Fueron días de, de andar de casa, en, en cada casa de uno de los concejales, en cada casa. Ir como, creo, como de tres a cinco veces a la casa de, del concejal Phil para conseguir su apoyo. Norma, Cuando... ¿puedes cambiar su cámara para que le podamos ver? Sí, permítame. No sé qué pasó. And, and, and Reina, can you talk a little bit about um, the... We can't see you actually, if you can turn your camera around. Sí, yo creo que aquí se apaga porque no hay este señal. Voy oh, okay. a salir de aquí. Okay, Voy no a salir problem. de aquí. Voy a salir de aquí. If you can talk about um, the threats that you face, um, you know, to your to your business, I know that the police have been harassing uh, street vendors for years. I mean, that's been um, a threat. And what that was like to be part of this campaign, uh, facing that kind of threat on an ongoing basis. Sí, uh, pues nosotros hemos eh, luchado durante muchos años porque la policía nos ha estado persiguiendo, cor, eh, corriendo atrás de nosotros, acosándonos. A mí me ha puesto muchos, muchos tickets de 300 dólares. Eh, pero lo más, lo más triste fue cuando eh, me llevó arrestada por estar vendiendo unos taquitos y un atol de lote. Vinieron como 15 policías y, y me llevaron solo por estar tratando de ganarme la vida honradamente de trabajar todos los días. Vinieron como 15 policías y se llevaron todas mis cosas. Subieron uh -huh. todo a sus carros, se lo llevaron, me llevaron a mí, me esposaron como que somos unos grandes criminales. Y, y es algo muy, muy triste esto. Uh -huh. Nosotros tenemos historias muy tristes aquí en la calle, pero nos da gusto saber que estamos logrando poco a poco cambiar la historia. Yeah. I'm so sorry for that, for what you and others, um, uh, your, your compañeras uh, have gone through as well. And I uh, know that despite all of that, the campaign went on to achieve some amazing things. And I wanted to ask um, Ras uh, Ulamin to talk a little bit about what were some of the, the things that you felt were successful in this campaign? What do you think um, was achieved by being a part, despite all the the, the difficulties and the threats um, that everyone had to go through. Do you feel it was a success? Do you feel like there were things gained through this campaign? Oh, yes. Yeah. I feel like it was a great success. But uh, as always, much work needs to be done. You know, work is never done. You know, and we benefited from it a lot through the fund, through the mass fund, 
through the uh just through the aid period, you know, I mean, being a vendor is it's not it's really entrepreneurship. You know, some days you make some money, some days you don't. Right. You know, just to have that that structural support is is very vital, you know, but this is just the beginning. You know, right. and what we're doing now is you know, we're organizing, we're getting all the vendors information, you know, we get them to get cash out. And not only are we doing it in Columbia Heights, but we're also going to spread it around the city, you know, because it should be it should be for all vendors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, you know, it's it's been a great, a massive, massive achievement, but the work is is a lot, it's a lot left left to be done. <laughs> right. You know, it's yeah. still it's still much more to do, but I'm just glad to be a part of it. You know, we also got the sweatshirts made, you know, mm -hmm. excited. Can you read what it says on the sweatshirt for everyone, please? Las vidas negran important Black Lives Matter. Vendedores Unidos, workers yeah. united. Yeah. So we got That's these right. made. We gonna also be working on getting some hats made. It just it's about you know it's about a structure and about showing leadership and showing support. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's what the vendors that's, that's what we need. You know we need that because you yeah. have some vendors who they're not able to be out there mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. You know, like myself. So I, I took this opportunity upon myself to be the voice of those who can't speak. So that's right. why I'm here. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and again, you know, the, the sacrifices that you all made being part of this campaign to speak on behalf of everyone, because I think yeah. I want to go back to some of the the um, the pieces that you're all raising up about how difficult it is to make a daily living in D.C. anyways. Yeah. But then you have the pandemic on top of that, and you have right. people like street vendors, sex workers, and others who were not receiving the benefits that were put out by the government, right? So right. I understand that the initial demand was for $30 million. And in the end, I believe what was achieved was only $14 million, which still doesn't right. cover everyone's everyone's needs. And right. so I was wondering if, if anyone, um, if, uh, if you would like to speak, uh, Rasul Amin, if Reina, if Norma, anyone who's spoken so far would like to comment a little bit on um, the amount of benefits that were being asked for, uh, where that number came from, and what do you think um, really needs to be provided in terms of monetary? There's so much else that needs to be provided by government, but just speaking specifically about the, the dollar amounts that were um, identified. I guess I'm not sure if they want me to go. <laughs> when I'm going to let you go first since you're unmuted. Yeah, please, please go ahead. Okay. Well, I think that, I mean, even though we didn't get the desired amount that we asked for, it's a start, but that's, that, that adds more fuel to the fire for me, mm -hmm. you know, because, um, like I said, being a vendor, you know, we, it's, it's, it's a, it's a whole different world. It's entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know? It's it's leadership. Mm -hmm. It's being a part of the community. You know, right. it's we play we play a big part in the community. Right, right. Especially Absolutely. with kids and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to get this legislation passed for the sidewalk law. You know, mm -hmm. that's another thing that we're accomplishing. So I mean, it, it's just the beginning, but I see great things happening in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning the sidewalk law. I want to step back to this particular legislation for just a second. Um, Tamika, also, I just saw that uh, your, your, your image pop up on my screen, so I wanted to ask you um, also to jump in here and talk a little bit about the legislation that was passed by council and what, what still remains to be seen. Um, I understand that it's taking also a while for the money to come out that, that they said that they that they promised um, to everyone. So could you speak a little bit about that legislation that was actually ultimately passed, please? It was a long time coming when it should have been something that was taken care of when the pandemic started. Right. You know, it, I don't know what they were thinking to give MPD such a huge influx of money to continue negative policing when they should have been investing in the people here in this city. Right. That stimulus package that went out to businesses, mm -hmm. not a hitch, got that out in record time. Mm -hmm. But here we are seven, eight months into this pandemic mm -hmm. and people in the informal economies, the shadow economies that do work 
have been completely left out and still have yet to receive these funds. Funds that we have already agreed upon, but they're so hooked up and and how, oh, we're we're gonna uh, have problems giving it to them. There's gonna be accountability issues. How do we know that that didn't happen with the other entities that we've given money to? Exactly. No qualms about them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Let the money go. Right. These people need it. A lot of it's going to go right back into the tax rolls. Right. These Absolutely. people, it's not like they're going to hoard it. Mm-hmm. All of these people are suffering, have been suffering for months. And it's absolutely ridiculous to be holding back at this time. They should have been making it as easy as possible. The money should have been distributed by now. Absolutely. I mean, come on. How, how long does it take? Yeah. No, that's ludicrous and, and insulting. You know, that's it's very funny. insulting. Yeah, it's very it's insulting. And in, in all honesty, they should have given us the 30 million. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I asked for a huge number because that is what is needed. I knew it would take them forever to get to get around to it and that it would take this long because right. of who we're giving this money to. They right. wanted to fraction us off. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to divide and conquer and keep that number low. I wanted to ask about that, actually, because I, I did see that, that piece about um, there was a lot of back and forth about who would be included in this legislation. And at one point, I believe Chairman Mendelssohn said that it would only cover undocumented workers. And so the, prim- the majority being immigrant workers um, from Latin America who are primarily Spanish speakers, right? And so that I... I remember seeing that and thinking, what is going to happen at this point, right? Because obviously the council is trying to divide and um, and and cause frictures and 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 fra- and, uh, and and uh, tension within the movement, which is there, which is what they do. Um, and mm-hmm. so, for me, this was one of the most in- in- interesting and pivotal points in the campaign. So, Tamika, I was wondering if, if you and also um, Arturo, I know you haven't had a chance to speak yet, if you both could talk about that moment of having undocumented workers pitted against other workers, primarily Black workers in the city, and what, what was the decision made by organizers, by the movement, in terms of how to respond to that moment? I, I felt like they were dead wrong. We both have a long standing history here in the District of Columbia. It's been the melting pot of this country in all honesty. People Mm -hmm. came here because they felt like the seat of government would have been the most fair and equitable place to live. Mm -hmm. So by all rights and standards, this city, as progressive as it is, should have thought about including us to begin with. The informal economies have been an active part of this city since its inception. Mm -hmm. Sex workers have been a part of this city since its inception. Right. And, right. Uh, uh, and the undocumented immigrants have been a part of this city since it was built. Right. So mm-hmm. why are we excluding people that have been an active part of our community forever? That's exactly right. Um, Arturo, um, uh, could you speak a little to that? At that moment when Phil said, you know what, we'll include undocumented workers only and not the other workers. Uh, how did how did all the groups respond to that? How did you and, and, and the members of Trabajadores Unidos respond to that to that moment? The, many of the workers that are part of Trabajadores Unidos are undocumented, right? So it would have benefited well, them. In fact, uh, you, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, actually, I want to say first that I appreciate everything that is being spoken. This campaign was absolutely necessary uh, it was very important for us to get involved. We got we got involved a little bit at the end of the campaign because we we also have, were fighting to get money nationally. We are part of a big network of uh, of day laborers organizations, and we trying we help we were helping to make sure that they uh, were able to get money for all the organizations in the United States that are day labor organizations. Mm-hmm. We were very interested in doing that. So we got involved in the thing, and that money that was that came out at the beginning was absolutely important, and uh, the possibility of more assistance is going to be absolutely. The suffering of our community is very deep. Right, um, Reina. And, yeah. Yeah, Reina. I wanted to ask you as well. What What did you What What did the members, the vendedores, um, say to 
Phil Mendelssohn, when he said, we're going to include undocumented immigrants, but not everybody else, what was the response that, that you all had to that proposal and why? Eh, bueno, nosotros dijimos, eh, en, eh, ¿aló? Sí, nosotros estamos unidos y en esto estamos todos juntos y vamos a luchar para que también todos los que, aunque tengan un permiso de trabajo o que tengan eh, algún estatus eh, migratorio, también sean incluidos. ¿Por qué? Porque ellos también trabajan todos los días como nosotros. Quizás es un trabajo informal, pero es un trabajo con el claro. cual nosotros apoyamos aún a la economía de este país, aunque ellos no lo quieran ver de, de esta manera, de esta forma. Nosotros sí. hacemos fuerte también aquí, right. aquí en la comunidad de Tizín. Entonces you, luchamos y nos unimos para... Sí, perdón. No, no, it's okay. I, I see that Norma also wanted to add something to that. So Norma, do you want to add to what Reina is saying about that ah, moment? Okay. Sí, eh, nosotros eh, les dijimos, eh, muchos de ellos al no abrirnos la puerta, al estar ahí, entonces decidimos hacer cartas y decirles eh, qué pensábamos. Y lo que sí nosotros les dijimos en esto es eh, deténgase, deténgase a pensar por un momento que las personas que sufren fuesen parte de su familia. Piensen qué pasaría si su hijo no tuviera que comer un techo para vivir como padre o como madre creo que también lucharíamos por el bienestar de nuestros hijos. Esto no es cuestión de estatus, es cuestión de humanidad. Muchos de nosotros ya no contamos con el dinero necesario para afrontar los gastos diarios de nuestras familias. A partir de esta posición solicitamos su pronta ayuda debido a la pandemia que estamos sufriendo. Pedimos, tomen en cuenta a todas nuestras personas exclu excluidas por igual. En especial, venimos a pedir por toda la gente que está legalmente en esta ciudad y desde luego no cuenta con un permiso de trabajo, perdón, y que cuenta con un permiso de trabajo o un social y que por injusticias han sido excluidas. Sabemos que ustedes tienen que tomar decisiones difíciles, pero es más difícil estar en este, de este lado, donde las preocupaciones crecen cada día más. Eh, ese tipo de cartas fueron las que nosotros les llevamos a los concejales. Thank you so much. That, that's incredible and very inspiring and amazing to, to see uh, what happened in that moment. Um, I remember, Miguel, you were part of that as well. I think Arturo as well in 2012, I think, when we marched, uh, 2014, when we marched to city council and um, to support a day without an immigrant. And I remember half the march chanting Black Lives Matter and half the march chanting Si Se Puede on top of Black Lives Matter and really dividing the group that way. And to go from that to this moment right now, to see that uh, this campaign in particular brought workers together to say, no, we have each other's back and you can't put one in front of the other that everyone's needs have to be covered and we are all workers in, in this fight together is really a pivotal um, moment that I really wanted to lift up. So thank you all for sharing personally how you felt for that. I want to go back to the, the, the demand and the win, uh, specifically around the, the dollar amount. Um, um, as you said, uh, Tamika, 30 million, absolutely, you know, uh, should have been asked for if, if not more, right? I saw a, a dollar amount, I saw an analysis that um, if, Five million was proposed at one point. I believe the city council at one point said that they were only going to provide five million from the 30 million that was asked for. And five million would have only been $200 per person. And that's only counting undocumented workers. So the initial proposal that was put out from 30, they went to five. And if you do the math and divide five million by all the undocumented workers that um, would receive the benefits, that's only $200, which as we all know, living in a city like DC is, is, is nothing. And um, uh, Raina mentioned earlier that a, a, a ticket for vending on the street can be three to $500, right? So that's absolutely nothing. And that's again, only included in, including undocumented workers. So if you're gonna think about everyone that needs to be covered, that's even less than 200 per person, right? And ultimately I believe the amount was 14, but could you speak specifically about um, Tamika, could you speak specifically about that 14 million and what it would go, who it would go to and what it would cover? What was finally won out of the campaign? That was if they gave it to us on a sooner than later basis. I mm -hmm. really wanted us to push for more 
mm-hmm. and know what number we mil- really needed to settle on. Mm-hmm. 14 million was what we were really looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, and I felt like if we went big, they would have to settle. Right. And they came to that 9 million number, which is still inadequate. 14 right. million is really inadequate at this point. You right. know, we actually need that 30 million now. Right. You know, right. I'm looking at it from the big picture of what the effect is going to be on the tail end. Mm-hmm. And on the tail end is massive homelessness. If we don't address this now, we are going to have a huge influx of homelessness in a city that is overwrought with homelessness now. Right, absolutely. So why are we not being proactive to stop it now? If we're not going to cancel rent, cancel mortgages, that's right, and cancel the debt, right? you're not doing that, so you need to influx the money. That's exactly right. We have a huge right. surplus. Why aren't we using it? Absolutely. Why are we giving MPD more money? The mayor's trying to give them $43 million more dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That 43 should be coming to the informal economies. Absolutely. Seriously, Could- because look at how much in rent we're behind. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's Absolutely. on all sides of this issue. Absolutely. Everybody is suffering and they are absolutely ridiculous to come with $9 million. It's a drop in the pan. I mean, as soon as you drop it, it's gone. Right. Absolutely. And that's 14 million. So that would be just, it would be cash assistance for those workers who are ineligible for an unemployment benefits. Correct. That's what was that. So it was one, um, I believe through the campaign, which I I, want to absolutely agree with you, Tamika. That's, that's a drop in the bucket. And yet I want to lift up that even that would not have been won without the work that y'all did. You know, it, it, it would took a lot of effort and it shouldn't have to have, you know, it shouldn't have to have done that. But the really? effect, efforts and the impact that y'all had in your campaign and, and supporting one another, not just in that moment when, when Phil tried to divide, but since I can get through what everyone's saying, everyone's been feeling excluded and unsupported by the city council and by our local government, how did you all support one another? Um, I, I wanted to maybe go back to, to Rasul Amin and also to uh, Reina to talk a little bit in this moment about how, how did you support one another in this, in this moment? Because you're not feeling supported overall by, by city government and by others. Um, what were the moments, what were the ways in which you supported one another? Well, for me, one of the ways we, I, we supported one another is I've done work with uh, Mutual Aid World One. We we set a table up, mm-hmm. and we prioritize the vendors first. We make sure they get the groceries, mm-hmm. right? Make mm-hmm. sure they get whatever they need. We even give vendors. We even give out free masks with it too. So you know, whatever we can do to help, you know, that's what we do. You know, that's, that's just so, and that's just growing. That's building a relationship. That's what we have to do. We got to build trust and build a relationship amongst each other. Right. Rena, do you want to add anything to how you felt supported or did you feel like you could support others during this uh, campaign? Eh, sí, claro. Eh, durante el empiezo de todo esto, y sabemos que hubo momentos muy, muy difíciles en los que nosotros no podíamos salir a vender porque ne- necesitamos que estar eh, cuidando nosotros y nuestros niños, nuestros hijos. Eh, fue muy importante nosotros Estuvimos eh, protegidos por Emblo, con Megan. Ellos nos ayudaban semanalmente a todos nosotros los vendedores, dándonos una cantidad cada semana. Entonces, en realidad, eso fue el único soporte que nosotros tuvimos en los momentos más fuertes de, de esta pandemia, y, y lo cual nosotros agradecemos mucho a, a Emblo y a Megan, porque sabemos que es un trabajo muy arduo, muy duro, que ellos, pues, por amor a, 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 a su comunidad, por amor a, a ayudar a las personas que necesitan, en este caso nosotros, hicieron el esfuerzo y obtuvieron estos fondos para, para nosotros, pues poder, ahora sí como pues se dice, poder, so, estábamos sobreviviendo, si no, de otra manera, no sé qué hubiéramos, qué hubiéramos hecho, porque eso nos ayudó mucho, mucho, pero demasiado, no tiene idea cuánto, cuánto nos ayudó esto a nosotros. Sí. Yes. 
demasiado, Así. mucho, mucho, agradecemos mucho en el alma esta ayuda que, que dieron, porque eran momentos, había muchos que lloraban porque no tenían nada que, que comer, los diles no paraban, fue muy duro, muy difícil, y con eso que ellos nos daban, este, pues sobrevivimos y gracias a Dios aquí estamos y seguiremos luchando junto con ellos y agradecemos a, a todos, a todos ustedes, su apoyo, su ayuda, su dedicación, porque sabemos que son personas que lo hacen sin ningún fin, sin ningún eh, lucrando con esto, no, sino para ayudarnos a nosotros. Y a nombre de todos los vendedores unidos y de todos los que estamos aquí, nosotros decimos a ustedes muchas gracias por su apoyo y por su ayuda, por su tiempo. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Rena, for, for everything you do and for, for inspiring and motivating all of us. And I think one of the things I heard about was this fund also that was um, set up uh, by Rock. Uh, Norma, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that fund and how it supported um, the workers that were part of the campaign as well. Bueno, nosotros no hemos tenido mucho o en el momento pues ya se había acabado. Entonces nosotros lo único que hacemos es eh, apoyarnos entre nosotros haciendo mascarillas, haciendo comida. Entonces lo que hacemos es um, invitar a nuestros conocidos a que compren. Es la manera en la que nos hemos estado ayudando. Eh, los organizadores sí nos han ayudado en la manera de que buscan recursos. Eh, por ejemplo, este, útiles escolares, mochilas, ellos nos buscan comida, pero nosotros también estamos trabajando de nuestro lado, enviando eh, cartas a las organizaciones para que ellos nos puedan dar este, igual ayuda que, que necesitamos, porque pues ahorita los niños necesitan ropa, la mayoría son, la mayoría de las personas tienen niños, entonces necesitan mucho. Ellos nos han ayudado con el soporte si necesitamos alguna ayuda para... Eh, para las conexiones. También eh, nos buscaron la ayuda de, de, de relajación, sanación, porque en estos momentos se necesita mucho. Ya el estrés estaba muy elevado. Cuando ya las deudas las teníamos eh, ah, muy fuertes o las seguimos teniendo, ellos nos, eh, nos consiguieron estas clases. Pero sí, sí, yo creo que necesitamos más ayuda. Eh, necesita, la organización necesita más ayuda para que ellos nos, nos puedan seguir ayudando. Right. Thank you. For, and, and also, um, I wanted to ask Tamika, too. I just looked at the time and we're sort of running out. But I wanted to ask you, Tamika, um, to talk about how you felt, um, you know, the workers were able to support one another within HIPS or within um, No Justice, No Pride. Uh, was there a moment within organization and also organization to organization, um, how you all were supported and how you can take that support into future work, uh, future campaign work that you all are working on right now. Ooh. So as soon as the pandemic started, my first thought was how are sex workers going to survive? And me and Emilia Talarico from No Justice, No Pride, who I also work with, um, We came up with the idea to start a fundraiser and we were able to help 200 and some odd people with at least three rounds of funding. You know, it wasn't much, you know, sometimes we were able to do up to 500. There were times we typically tried to stay around 250 each disbursement, but that was how we came up with our initial response and you no know, just the surprise started making hand sanitizer and and hips was distributing it um you know hips offers a variety of services as it is and we just shifted it around so we could continue to offer those services and i know for a fact our case management services have been very very much needed right now you know, more so than ever before. You know, a lot of people that are already experiencing homelessness are coming into you No know, Just and So Pride because we are providing housing for transgender women of color. Mm -hmm. And a significant portion of those transgender women of color are also sex workers. Right. You know, Taking care uh, of each we, other. We've that's, been... Yeah. We balance each other out, you know, that's why we work so closely together, 
you know, because we, we work with the same type of populations. Right, right. But that's how we started out supporting one another within, you know, just our segment. But then when the informal economies came in, I was like, well, that's a no brainer because we all are in the same basket. Mm -hmm. You know, we are not um, salary paycheck employees. Right. We don't get benefits. You know, right. a lot of us don't qualify for benefits. Right. You know, right. we figure out how to survive. Right. That's, that's why it's the informal economy. Absolutely. And the key of survival in terms of, you know, you've mentioned, others have mentioned housing quite a few times. And I know that there's, you know, simultaneously, there are campaigns to cancel the rent across the city mm -hmm. that I believe Rock and um, also HIPS and other groups are involved in. Um, Arturo, do you want to talk about in the future of Trabajadores, how this is uh, going to connect to, to some other work that Trabajadores Unidos is also working on um, currently? Sure, we are, uh, uh, you hear me, right? We are uh, organizing, continue to organize. We were happy to get support from the campaign and so forth, we have, but we're moving forward. Uh, we're working on a number of projects because we have to continue organizing. We are very concerned about the PPF uh, workers who are gonna get laid off basically at the end of the year. And we have to, so we are organizing a campaign to do work with the PPS workers who are going to be excluded eventually in, at the end of the year. So we have to have a big job to do and so forth. So right. the idea of this thing is that we have to continue organizing. Organizing is the key to build the, the, the future uh, and, the, and the improvement of our community. And we all have to get together. We all have to come together. Everybody has to come together, all the organizations, so, so we can move forward and build. So we are uh, moving toward that. We're Absolutely. going to send you invitations about the PPS campaign that we are building. It's very important. We want everybody to be involved in this campaign because we don't want, if the people who have, the workers who have TPS, we don't want it to be, we don't want it to not have the social security and they will fall into the same category that we all are, undocumented workers, the workers at home people, and in many parts of the city are going through a lot of difficulties, but we are happy that people are moving forward. Absolutely, thank you for sharing that last point on, we have to continue to organize, it's all connected. Uh, TPS, for those that don't know, is temporary protected status. And um, for some countries it's already ended, and for other countries it's gonna be ending soon. And um, so obviously uh, that immigration threat, the housing threat, the daily assistance and being able to um, just survive every day, um, going on with Tamika said survival is, is key to, and organizing is the only way forward to be able to do that. So thank you again to everyone, to HIPS, to Rock DC, to Many Languages, One Voice, to Trabajadores Unidos, to all the groups and all the individuals that are here today and part of this uh, work. And just in our last couple minutes, I'm gonna uh, pass the mic over to uh, my compañera Farah to talk a little bit about um, how everyone here on the call can continue to support this, this amazing work. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Sapna. Thank you so much to all of the panelists. This was really inspiring. Uh, as part of the DC Fund Board, I wanted to thank everyone for participating and of course ask for your continued support. Um, in this, this has been an incredibly challenging year and a bright spot for me has been seeing the strength of the social and justice, social and racial justice movements like this one. At DC Fund, we've been working really hard to rise to the challenges and to better support DC grassroots um, organizations led by black people, indigenous people, people of color. We are about to have our 10 year anniversary and this year we're giving out close to $1 million, which is about the same amount that we gave out in our first eight years. Uh, this includes rapid response grants around COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter, a grant specific to DC groups led by returning citizens who are engaged in COVID-19 response. We're also really working to push other funders, larger funders, to follow our lead and do community-led giving uh, through models that trust impacted people, invest in change organizations, and center Blackness. As we approach election day, we'd like to ask for your continued and increased support to ensure that DC grassroots groups led by BIPOC people have the resources they need to stay safe, to continue healing and to build power. If you're an individual donor who can make a gift today, maybe in honor of this campaign, we really encourage you to do that. 
you know, this year has been really shining a bright light on longstanding systemic and racial inequalities. Just last night, another young black man was killed. Um, his name is Karen Hilton, was killed by police violence in DC. Transformative change is necessary and urgent. Our vision is that black, indigenous, brown communities can flourish and lead the way to sustainability, equity, and liberation. We're so grateful for your time and support and continued partnership. I also want to remind everyone, particularly the grantees, that um, we have a grant round open. It closes this Friday night. You need to apply before midnight, and there's more information on our website. Uh, I think we're going to close in a moment with a little more music and some photos from the campaign. I also saw a lot of questions about sweatshirts. I know that that's something that the vendedores are working on. Um, and I know that you can find Reina and I think Rasul in front of the Target. So you can always follow up with them in Columbia Heights. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 